Hello everybody, my name is uh, Masood Olia and I'm a professor in the uh, Mechanical Engineering Department in College of Engineering and Computer Science. And uh, I'm glad that I'm back again after a short break with yet another exciting short video. Remember the emphasis is on the short. Uh, so this is not probably going to be 12 minutes video for you guys. So what I have here uh, today is a problem that is related to uh, thermal stress and strain. So what we have here, we have two bars. One is made of aluminum and the other one is made of bronze. They are uh, put together. Uh, we have all the information regarding these two bars here. A 15 inch for the aluminum, 12 inch in length. And these are all the properties that we need. Well, we have the cross-sectional area for the aluminum and the bronze. Modulus of elasticity, 10 million PSI for aluminum, 15 for bronze. 15 million and then notice here we have the uh, coefficient of thermal expansion you guys remember in class that coefficient of thermal expansion is the amount of normal strain uh, due to one degree change in temperature so look at the unit of that one over degree Fahrenheit of course it could be also in one per degree Celsius if you change this unit system so notice here there is a gap here between the uh, end of bronze and the wall here so uh, these walls are rigid, so they're not going to move. So the gap at room temperature is 0 0.02 inches. The question here is if we raise the temperature by 200 degree Fahrenheit. So if temperature is raised by 200 degree Fahrenheit, we want to determine the compressive load He developed in the bar. So find if the temperature is raised by 200 degree Fahrenheit. What is the compressive load P developed? So what we are uh, indicating here is that when the temperature increases that much, the bronze and aluminum are going to expand. They're going to hit the wall. They're going to go beyond the gap and they're going to hit the wall. And then as a result of that, we'll have a compressive load developed. Uh, which would be exactly the same one over here on this side, okay? All right, so let's get it started by seeing what would be the temperature, the effect of temperature in the expansion of these two bars. So imagine if there wasn't any, uh, you know, wall here. So if, imagine if there wasn't any wall. How would these guys expand? How much would they expand? Now we know that the actual thermal deformation is the length of the bar times uh, coefficient of thermal expansion times delta T. Because we have two bars, we're going to use the summation form of this equation. Now, of course, temperature is the same. So if you take temperature out, we have alpha L for the aluminum, alpha times L for aluminum, plus alpha, L, uh, alpha times L for the bronze. And of course, we are factoring out delta T. So let's go ahead and plug in the numbers that we have. So alpha for the aluminum, as you could see here, is 12.8 times 10 to the negative 6. Unit is consistent per degree Fahrenheit times the length of this guy, which is 15 inches. And then for the uh, bronze, as you could see, the alpha is 10.1 times uh, 10 to the negative 6 times the length, which is 12 inches, and of course, temperature of 200 degree Fahrenheit. So if you do the uh, calculation, this should come out to be about 0.0. 6264 uh, to be exact. That's in inches. So my two moved a little bit up. Here we go. So, so in other words, if you let this guy expand, it's going to go beyond the wall like that. So that's obviously covering the 0.02 inch gap. So now imagine the load, the, the, the uh, compressive load that is developed is the load needed to bring this guy back to the wall. So we can go ahead and say, okay, look, the delta P, the one that is going to generate that compressive load, is the difference between delta T and the gap. So if I deduct from the 0 0.06264, the 0 0.02 inch, then my delta P would be 0 0.04264 inches. Okay, uh, so now how do we use this to find that compressive load? Well, 
in this chapter related to axially loaded members, we know that delta P is equal to summation of PL over EA. Of course, the compressive load that is developed here is the same load for aluminum as well as the bronze. So if I factor load P out here, so that would be L over EA for the aluminum plus L over EA for the bronze. And from here is just a quick plug-in. So you already know what delta P is. That's 0 0.04264 equal P. And we have everything else. Look, the length of aluminum is 15 inches divided by modulus of elasticity of 10 million PSI and an area of 3 inches squared, right? And then the length of the, uh, the bronze is 12 inches, modulus of elasticity of 15 million PSI and smaller cross-sectional area of 2.5. Okay. So you see the only unknown here is P. Figure out what the bracket is and then divide, put it underneath here and solve for P. P comes out to be exactly 52,000 pounds, which is really nice, actually. You don't have to worry about fractions and decimals. And uh, so that's the compressive load developed. This is the compressive load. I have an, a second part to this problem. I didn't want to mention it at the beginning, too. I didn't want to clutter your mind, your brain. So let me go ahead and add another part to this. So now that you know what the compressive load is due to this temperature, rise, what would be, for example, the length, the final length of the aluminum? So 15 inch becomes what? Or for that bronze, doesn't matter. If you find one, you can find the other one. So let's go ahead and um, determine this. So let's, let me write it down. Find, uh, let's say, the change in length of, I'll just pick aluminum, of aluminum. OK. So this is the way we do this. Very simple. You want to find the overall change in length for aluminum. Remember, you're going to use all the information on aluminum now. So due to temperature rise, we have expansion of alpha L times delta T, or L alpha delta T. And then the temperature is going to cause this guy to have thermal deformation. Then the compressive load kicks in. So we have minus PL over EA. So if you plug in. Um, alpha is 12.8 times 10 to the negative 6. The length is 15 inches, as you could see, and temperature is 200 degree Fahrenheit minus the load that I just calculated for you, 52,000 times the length of uh, 15 inches divided by modulus of elasticity of 10 million and the area of 3. This should come out to be about, let's see, 0.01. 24 inches. So basically, the final length of aluminum is going to be 15.0124 inches. And then, by the way, without even going through the same process of figuring out what should be the final length of the bronze, how much bronze is going to change? Well, you only confine to 0 0.02 inch gap. That's your gap, right? So subtract this from the gap. And here we go, 0 0.0076 inches. That's how much the bronze is going to change in length. So the final length of the bronze is going to be 12.0076 inches. So that's it. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Be back with more videos like this. Thank you again.